So I'm going to show you how to extract data from an implicit intent. But before I do that, let's do some quick tidying up. If you open up your about activity, from the last tutorial, we added some uh, strings to help us track the behavior of explicit and implicit intents. Well, now we know how that works. Let's get the app running the way we were planning it to run. So in this section where no action is detected, it's an explicit internal request. Let's put in our original code. So let's remove this and just cut and paste from, from up here. So cut. You'll remember originally we received the extras bundle and then we set the text view in our layout to the string that we provided in that extras bundle. Okay, now this part with the action detected from an implicit call. Let's remove this string. To access the data on an implicit call, you need to In our case, we know it's of the form of a string, so we can say string data. By now you'll be used to getting a handle on the intent. And here we will get uh, get that string extra. And it's called get string extra because we're getting some standard extra data that goes along with standard implicit intents. Let me show you what I mean. In some earlier tutorial, I showed you these standard intent action activities, and we were using this one to send an implicit intent. Well, there's also a set of standard data types that you can look up, depending on what you your app is doing. And the data type associated with our activity at the moment and intent is the extra text. So at this moment, at this point here, you type intent and of course Android Studio continues to be amazing and auto completes extra text. So what we have now is this text that's been sent to our activity stored in data and to set that text field we just tap in data let's hit save and run so if we enter our activity in the usual way we'll see the message that we had originally let's exit our app let's go into the browser and see what happens when we share this web using the implicit intent share page, hit our application, and there you can see the URL of the client user.net YouTube channel. Great, that works.